Hallelujah. All right, well, Jim brought up a scripture earlier, and I'm going to lead in with this. Jim brought in up a scripture earlier. He brought up Acts chapter 19, starting at verse 8. Let me grab my Bible real quick. Acts chapter 19, starting with verse 8, which I love that he brought it up. As soon as he brought up Acts chapter 19, verse 8, I'm like, he just softball pitched me. Acts chapter 19. I'm taking a minute for the water to cool down. It's not that. I just want the water to cool down a little bit. So I'm buying a few minutes. Acts chapter 19. He started at verse 8. Paul went into the synagogues for three months and spoke boldly, right? I'm going to back up just to the beginning there. How's that? So I'm going to go 1 through. uh, You went 8 through 16 or something like that. I'm going to go 1 through 7. And because we're going to talk about the baptismal water, this is my favorite. God has had me in Acts chapter 18 and 19 for the longest time when it comes to what God is doing in our baptismal waters. For a long time, I'm like, Lord, we got to do baptisms for repentance. That's what it is. John's baptism of repentance. So if any of you guys haven't heard my teaching on baptism, I'm not going to give the teaching. I'm just going to do like a five-minute version real quick. But I always believe that the, the argument was always amongst the church. They're always arguing. Do you got to be baptized to be saved? Well, well, you got to, you know, it says, what must I do to be saved? And uh, you have to repent and be baptized. So we have to be baptized. In other places, Paul just says, just believe and you're saved. So there's this conflicting information. And something that I learned a while ago was when I looked at the word, what must I do to be saved? That word saved does not indicate what must I do to go to heaven. Going to heaven and being saved are two different words. That word saved in the Greek actually means saved, set free, delivered, restored. It is a complete and total transformation. It means not just to be entered into heaven or have uh, heaven as our home, but it also means to be completely restored and delivered. So when they were asking him, what must we do to be saved? They weren't saying, what must I do to be allowed to go to heaven? It was, what must I do to be completely made new? What must I do to be made a whole new person? He said, repent heaven and be baptized, empowered here. When we're baptized, we're empowered with the Holy Spirit. In Matthew 3.11, it says this. John the Baptist said this to Jesus. He said, the one coming after me whose sandals I'm not even fit to untie, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So John set the precedent that his baptism was a holding place until Jesus come. And Jesus was going to bring a better baptism. How do we know that's true? Because of Acts chapter 18 and verse 19. Okay? Uh, In verse 18... There's a small piece right here that says this. Um, It says, uh, it says he was, he was speaking and teaching accurately. He's talking about Apollos. He was speaking and teaching accurately the facts about Jesus while only being acquainted with the immersion of John, the baptism of John. It's funny how they say he was teaching everything accurately while only being acquainted with the, with the baptism of John. And it says that, that, Uh, This man began speaking out boldly in the synagogues, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside to explain the way of God more accurately. The only thing they point out about his teaching is that he was only acquainted with John's baptism. So remember, they don't have chapters in the Bible, so we don't stop and go to the next chapter. We're just going to read it on as it goes. So while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul traveled through the upper region and came to Ephesus. He found some disciples and said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They replied to him, no, we've never even heard of this Holy Spirit. He said, into what were you baptized? They said, into John's baptism. Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance, telling the people that they should believe in the one coming after him, that is Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. In all, there were about 12 men. Now, we know from, um, from Philip's baptism 
that it's still a baptism of water. Immersion means to be completely immersed. But you see here, let me, let me just reiterate what this is saying. Did you receive the Holy Spirit? No. What were you baptized into? John's baptism of repentance. Paul, that's not the right baptism. You need to be baptized again. John was a placeholder. You need to be baptized in Jesus' baptism, the one that comes with power of the Holy Spirit on your life. Okay, and a lot of people think the baptism of the Holy Spirit is without water. It can be. Jesus can do it. He does it all the time. But it was speaking of a water baptism. Every other baptism in the Bible, there, arguably there's more than seven, to be honest. Uh, uh, and I would argue over which, what they define as seven. But there's all types of baptisms in the Bible. This is one more. John was one more on top of the already existing baptisms. This morning we did a baptism for the commissioning of a, of a priestly blessing. To commission and ordain a pastor, we baptized them because that's what Aaron the high priest and his kids were done. They were baptized into the priesthood. So it was a commissioning of position. There's the mikvah for, for wives, uh, uh, so for, for brides to be cleansed waiting for their groom. So th there was the mikvah outside the house of the priest where they would wash their hands to remove the Gentile filth. They were angry at Jesus for not baptizing his hands as he came into their house to make sure he was Gentile free. That's why they were angry at him. And so you see all these different baptisms, and somehow we've got it in our minds that, that John's baptism is still the baptism we're supposed to be doing. Now, it's still the baptism of the old man leaving and the new man becoming. That's what the word says. But we're supposed to baptize expecting that when you go in this water, you're not just receiving the old man to the new, but rather than that, you're also receiving the Holy Spirit and fire. We don't see an example where they're separated other than Acts, other than the very beginning of Acts when the Holy Spirit first comes upon them. That's why I say we don't make a religious doctrine out of it that you can't receive the Holy Spirit without water. That's, that's nonsense. But if you're going to get in the water, you might as well receive all of it. If all of it's available, if you can get the whole lay hands on, prophesying tongues, all of it, all at once in the middle of it, what Paul was saying was, whoa, whoa, whoa. You don't know the Holy Spirit. Well, what were you baptized? John's. No. Uh, Jesus, you get it all, all at once, everything, one and done. I like one and done. Huh? But wait, there's more. Get baptized now, and you can have three for the price of one. Give up one life, get three baptisms. So that's the short of it. So I love Acts chapter 19 because it gives us a different perspective of what baptism is supposed to look like. There is literally nowhere else that teaches you that baptism is supposed to remain John's baptism. John's was a holding place. It doesn't say it remains in force. John invented it. It was John's alone. And when Jesus came, a better baptism came. It's still a new man, an old man, excuse me, becoming new. But it's more. It's fire. It's the Holy Spirit. And that only happened because what, ha what started happening in our water, in our baptisms, what started happening in our water, uh, I had to relook at the scripture through the lens of what was happening. God, what are you doing? Why, why are people getting in the water and they're being blasted by the power of the Holy Spirit? Why are we dragging them out of the water? And I had to relook at every scripture on baptism, and it came alive to me in a different way. Um, we, sh we don't, our experiences don't override the word of God. But our experiences can give us a perspective, a right perspective of the word of God. When we take our experiences and read the word of God with a fresh approach saying, Lord, this experience that I'm having doesn't line up with the word. Let me take away my understanding of the word and just read the word purely with a new heart and allow you to speak to me. And when I read it differently, when I read it through the lens of what was happening, it made complete sense to me and it came alive where I'm like, oh. I, I don't know how the church has missed this. Both 18 and 19 say John's baptism wasn't the end. I'm not getting into the argument of Father, Son, Holy Spirit, or saying Jesus. Like I'm not getting into the, the, the UPC type doctrine. But what we're saying is, is that when you get baptized, there should be some kind of power. That's what the Bible says. And we know, I've studied it out, it is water baptism still. Um. But it is, doesn't have to be because Acts chapter 2 says that God's powerful enough that if you don't have a water source uh, 
near you, he won't go, oh, darn it, I can't. See, he's bigger than that. So we don't get hung up on religious doctrine, but we understand that when you get baptized, we're expecting for the Holy Spirit. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to baptize here. And uh, any of the leaders that are in here, if we have a prophetic word, we'll give it for you. If you're in the water and you're having an encounter with God, you're free to stay in the water for uh, as long as you're having that encounter. As soon as your encounter is over, you can come out of the water. If there are more words or someone wants to give you a word that's in the room, you can get your word. But don't linger in the water waiting on another word. Uh, have your experience and we'll let you have a couple of minutes to have that, whatever that looks like. I will not push you under if you're getting baptized tonight. I will not push you under. Um, the Bible says that he that comes after me whose sandals I'm not fit to untie, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And the Lord spoke to me very clearly and said, Ren, you don't like to push people down at the altar. You can't stand it when ministers shove people's head. And I'm like, no. And he's like, the Holy Spirit, you always say it. This is what the Lord spoke to me. He says, you always say it. Holy Spirit doesn't need your help. And I'm like, yes, sir. That's right. And he says, so he says, so it says baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. Uh, why are you baptizing them for me instead of with me? It was just the way he spoke to me. He says, you don't push them down on the altar. Why are you pushing them down in the water? I was like, oh. He says, why don't you give me a minute to do what I want to do? Just give me a minute. See what I'm going to do. If nothing happens, it's okay. But if I want to do something, give me a second. Stop doing it for me. Okay. All right, Lord. So when you get in this water, when you get in, um, the Lord will touch you however the Lord touches you, but I will not be the one that pushes you under. If you sit in the water, you sit there for a moment, and the Holy Spirit doesn't take you under, that's fine. When you are ready, you go under. It's your decision when you are to go under. I will be there. I will lay hands on you. That's what will happen, but I will not be the one that pushes you under. In Jewish culture, they weren't pushed un uh, under anyways. <laughs> Everyone criticizing my video online, like, oh, she needed seven dunks. That's not the Holy Spirit. Man, y none of you guys have read the story about the leper and the seven dunks? Nobody's read that. Go down to the water, dip yourself in the water seven times, and their leprosy was cleansed. This lady dipped in the water seven times, and her deaf ear was open. Nobody catches that. It's astonishing the lack of biblical education that the church today has. And it comes back to the same thing I've said a hundred times. If you come to church faithfully for a whole year every Sunday, you've had 24 hours of biblical training, three working days. After a year of coming to church, 10 years of coming to church, you, ha you have been on the job one month. One month. And we wonder why Christians, after a decade of being in church, are ignorant. Because they're brand new at the job of being a Christian. They know nothing because they very rarely study outside of church themselves. And we wonder why that is. That nobody, every, pe hundreds of people criticizing the fact she went under multiple times. Not one of them have read about how the leper... Uh, the leper, they got cleansed after seven dunks in the water. Not on six, not on five, not on one. Seven. It was the seven. Does that mean we need to go down seven times? No. It just means we need to let Holy Spirit do what Holy Spirit's doing. Amen? All right. So I'm going to pray over this water and we're going to baptize. Hallelujah. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare right now that there is Holy Spirit fire in this water. Lord, that everyone that comes into this water will receive the Holy Spirit. They'll receive a refreshing, a renewing, a restoring. The old man will leave and the new man will come. And Father, we wait on you. Holy Spirit, we allow you to move in this water. Let your angels come. Heaven come. Let the oil of heaven be in the water. Lord, we declare right now that your spirit is moving. And we say that every gift will come alive when people get in this water. And we declare the power of God to be active in this water to birth and release the supernatural. Prophecy, tongues, and every other gift in between. Lord, we declare they're all available in this water. There is a releasing of the laying on of hands and baptizing and immersion. So, Father, right now I declare every demonic stronghold is broken in this water. Healing will happen in this water. Deliverance will happen in this water. Freedom comes in this water. Whatever they carry, sin, depression, anxiety, hurt, pain, wrong thinking, when they get in this water, Father, that they come up new, restored, refreshed, and a new creation in Christ. 
And everyone that gets in this water, we baptize in your name, Lord, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, you are baptized. Every person that gets in this water, whether we have time to say that or not, now, and every person that gets in this water is making a declaration that says they believe that Jesus is their Lord and they surrendered to him. They've asked for forgiveness. And so, Father, we bless that they believe and now they are baptized. Father, thank you. And for those getting in the water for a release of season, I declare new seasons upon them right now. A new assignment and a season of activation and moving forward in their calling. And I bless this water in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, who's first? Let's go. Thank you, Jesus. Get in, just face that direction. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ooh. There you go. She bounced right off the tank. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come. We invite your presence in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit fire, would you come? Baptize Nalan right now. New power, new authority, new giftings. Birth right now in Jesus' name. More, Lord. 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 More. Father, right now, I declare that it's a season of moving forward for Nalan right now. Father, out of the shadow into the light. Lord, I just declare that every gift that's lied, um, not sleeping, but inactive right now in the name of Jesus, I declare an active season, an active season, Father, right now. Every gift, come awake right now. Every gift be useful in this season. I hear the Lord just say this. He says, every gift that I've given you that hasn't got to be fully used, I'm going to make useful in this season. I'm going to make you useful and productive in this season. Father, I declare every gift inside of her is being made productive in this season. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else have a word for her? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I declare it right now. <laughs> This is why we record these, because they don't hear them, their words. Father, right now, I just declare an increasing gifting of joy on her life right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that she is a carrier of joy and a releaser of joy. I hear the Lord just say this. Joy is going to be a marker of your ministry because you're going to come with corrective power. The Lord says you're going to bring strong words of correction, but that joy will accompany them so that they're like sugar in medicine, easy to swallow. Father says they'll be easy to swallow because of the joy you carry. Father, thank you that you're releasing that on her, the, the charisma of joy that's on her life, that people will receive the strong word that the Lord says, like, like a battering ram you are against the enemy, like a battering ram of the word of God will come out of you and you'll break down strongholds like a battering ram, says the Lord, that when you declare a thing, you'll come with authority. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Anybody else have a word? No? So right now, in the name of Jesus, I release this. I release the authority of the word. Giftings come alive, come awake right now. By the laying on of hands, I declare right now that everything will not return void, but come awake. Every sleeping gift, slumbering gift, and every gift that's in her that's already awake, I say double right now in the name of Jesus. Double right now in the name of Jesus. It birth in doubling, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. Increase your Holy Spirit in Nalan right now in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Um, so I just felt like the Lord uh, was telling me that, like, just trust that he is in you. Like, trust that he's in you and that he can use you. And that when you pray for people... That it's not you, it's it's coming from him, and so you you have the ability inside of you to to pray for people and to step out and to launch out, 
and just trust that he is in you and he is the one doing it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I just see your red hot pants. And I just see a flame as you run into this next season. And I just declare and decree that in the name of Jesus, that as you take off running, that flame will be behind you and it will set ablaze those that are behind you and that you are leading into this season that you're walking into. And as they watch you, they'll be caught on fire just like you. I just declare that over you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence in the water. Thank you, Lord. All right, who's next? I think that's you. I don't know. Just whoever wants to come. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of Yeshua Jesus, a new creation in Christ, will you rise? Holy Spirit, touch her right now. Fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire. Come, Lord, come. More, more, Lord, more. We wait on you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. There it is, Holy Spirit. Fill her up, fill her up. Release every spiritual gift right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Right now in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. New fresh fire. Transforming fresh fire. I declare the old is being made new. And everything the enemy has ever planted in her life. Every foothold. Loose right now in the name of Jesus. And I declare the freedom in Christ rests on her life. She'll be a freedom carrier. Right now, in the name of Jesus, she'll be a freedom courier in the name of Jesus. I declare she won't just carry freedom. She'll help others get free. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I declare right now, God says he's giving you supernatural wisdom, a gift of wisdom. And the Lord says, I'm going to make you an example of what I can do. I'm make you an example of how I can change. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, the fire of God come into you and every spiritual gift that's lied slumbering, wake up right now in the name of Jesus and I release supernatural fire on you, supernatural gifts, every spiritual gift come awake and I hear the Lord just say you'll see things so that you're not deceived by things right now in the name of Jesus so I declare it right now, fire, fresh fire fall on her right now in the name of Jesus, fresh anointing come on her right now. Come awake in the name of Jesus. Come awake in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Gifts come awake, they go to sleep. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your power. I just keep hearing there's a shaking coming, and I, I, he says, will you hear me? He says, will you hear me? Will you listen to me? And I think it's a time that you need to really listen to what the Lord is telling you to do so that you know the path that you need to take. Um, I heard the Lord say he's, he's giving you a new level of discernment and you're going to know which spirit they be operate behind and you will have the wisdom to 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 communicate with the now and, and when to fight, which battle is worth fighting and which battle is not, and how to fight their bat, how to fight the battles, how to communicate with them, and when to stop and when. So, yeah, I, I feel the Lord saying basically like a new level of discernment on you.
I just hear you're in a, this is a, dis a season of decision making. That there's decisions that you um, have been praying about. And it's important that you seek his will in those decisions that you're praying about. Um, I just got to um, that the Lord is is holding on to you and um, just continue to make the, the right decisions. And so, Lord, right now, I just ask that you purpose her heart to make the right choices, to make the right decisions, to go in the right direction, and that she will stay on the path. She will stay on your path of righteousness. And I just declare right now that she will complete her destiny. She will fulfill her ministry in the earth and her assignment in the earth in the name of Jesus. So we just seal every word right now. We release it and it shall not return void. In the name of Jesus, we declare the old is gone. The new is here. Every prophetic word is true. And right now, everything declared come into her right now. In Jesus' name, everything loose from heaven. Loose from heaven. Loose from heaven. Loose from heaven. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I declare everything is being loosed into you and being brought into the natural right now. You receive it into you. Receive it into you. The new creation in Christ. Receive your empowering by the Holy Spirit inside of you right now. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And she's not there. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I declare when she comes up, she'll be a new creation in Christ. No more old thought patterns, no more old behaviors, Father, but something new. That as she touches heaven, holiness comes back with her. Power comes back with her. Anointing comes back with her. Thank you, Holy Spirit. transformed and made new in Jesus name thank you Lord <laughs> thank you Lord some people come in the water and they have a very peaceful time in the water and it's lovely and they feel refreshed many people come in the water and they have an encounter like this in the water but everyone has something there's no one that's gotten our water and said nothing happened it might not be extreme some people it was gentle and they took themselves down but I do find this even the ones where the Holy Spirit didn't whew, when they go under and they come up something happens on the up even if it's not on the down and it's beautiful to watch how so many people but the true judge of whether or not it's real is is their fruit lovey got in the water and she came down and fear left right Spirit of fear. Don't block the camera. Chris will kill you guys. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. The fruit of it's been the most amazing thing to watch is people come up out of the water and they're completely changed. And their personalities are different. Their attitudes are different. Their, their behavior is different. It's <clears throat> Their authority is different. Transformation in a moment. There's something to be said about getting the word in you and then getting the word in you. There are different ways to get the word in you. <laughs> we really got to get little sliding dividers. <laughs> Who would have thought we would have need like contraptions to hold bodies up in our baptism? Pretty sure that's a Holy Spirit uppercut. A 
that's not true. But he made me laugh. <laughs> I think she got touched by Pam's husband's God. I think he's real. See, this is my favorite stuff. Some of the best stuff I've ever done to atheists is they challenge me on stuff and I go, let me pray for you. And they go, well, I don't believe in any of that. I was like, you will. Let me pray for you. Have I told you about that? I offer lunch to atheists. So many times like an atheist will challenge me on faith and I'll have an you know, apologetics conversation with them. But then I'll say, tell you what, let me just buy you lunch. Um, if you come to church, you let me pray for you. If you don't encounter the power of a real living God, I will take you to lunch afterwards. And for an hour, I will sit there and let you berate me and mock me and laugh at me. And I will buy you lunch and I will let you do it publicly. And you'll have a blast. I think that's worth trading that trip at church and let me pray for you. Don't you think you get free lunch and you get to berate a pastor and he can't say nothing back. I've had several atheists take me up on that offer. I've never bought lunch. I've never bought lunch. You know, it's funny. People come up to the front, and sometimes they have an encounter. Sometimes they don't. But the atheist that challenged me has always had one because God's like, watch this. Watch this. Oh, man, I didn't get lunch. Didn't anybody ever tell you there's no such thing as a free lunch? I had one of them do that one time. They came and they said, well, before I came, I watched your science series and you've convinced me there must be a creator. I've gone from atheist to agnostic. I, I believe there's a creator. Like, I don't know how to doubt that anymore after your science series. But they said, I'm not sure about this. I'm not sure about, like, how do we know which God, like, what's right? But they said, but you've convinced me that there's something. And I'm like, well, today you're going to meet him. His name is Jesus, and you will encounter him and meet him. You know he's real, but now you'll meet him. And she went, okay. So I did the service, and she was sitting four or five rows back on the right side of the old building right about there. And, and I started praying. I was like, now, if you want to encounter the power of God, you come up to the front. And I started praying, and suddenly here she was right in front of me. I, I, didn't, I didn't look. I didn't see. I don't know what happened. Uh, she had her hands out like this, and I walked over, and I went, fire. And I just touched her hand with one finger. And she didn't do the, the Christianese fall backwards, you know, like the. She didn't do one of those. She just like, you know, like just knees, whoosh, just came out from underneath her, and she collapsed in a pile. There was no catcher able to catch her. It just bah, hit the floor, and she laid there for about 30 minutes, and she came to. She was electrocuted by the power of God. And uh, when she finally was able to express what happened, I said, I told you you were going to encounter the power of God. She goes, here's the crazy thing. I don't know how I came up to the altar. She goes, I was standing there, and I closed my eyes when you were praying, and I was telling myself, okay, this is like for real, but I don't want to go up there. I'm freaked out. I'm freaked out. I'm freaked out. I'm not going to go up to the altar. I'm not. And she was just standing there going, I'm not going to go. I'll just stay here, and, and he can pray from there, but I'm not going up to the altar. I am not. Not today. I'm not going up to the altar. Okay. Whew. And she goes, I opened my eyes, and I was standing at the altar. She goes, I have no clue how I got there, and I don't remember ever seeing her walk up. I'm not saying that. I don't know if she walked up, but all I know is that she was not coming, and suddenly she found herself at the front and didn't know how she got there. And I touched her with one finger. She got electrocuted by the power of God, and I did not buy her lunch. Who's next? Is that you? Come on. We don't need story time. We need baptism time. Holy Spirit. Krista, can you give me? I think I think these are nails. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You can't record yourself. <laughs> Holy Spirit, would you come right now? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of Yeshua Jesus. Lord, as you did it for her father. 
substitute even more for her fire right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, more, more, more. I declare a generational blessing, Father, over her. And what you did for her parents, Lord, do it right now in the name of Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit, in the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, the power of the Holy Spirit. Would you baptize her and release new spiritual gifts, new assignments and understandings? I hear the Lord just say a revelational season for you right now in the name of Jesus. I hear the Lord. I saw puzzle pieces coming from left to right and said, the Lord said, I'm going to align the pieces of your season in you, says the Lord. He says there's still some pieces to the left and right that are not quite in perfect alignment, but God says he's going to bring those pieces into alignment in this season. I saw people in the pieces. There are people that are a part of this equation that are going to align up in this season for you. So, Father, I declare right now, open doors over you in Jesus' mighty name. And I hear the Lord just say dreams and visions. There's going to be dreams and visions that God is giving you in the nighttime hours. I hear the Lord say, I'm going to wake you up. He's probably already doing it. Wake you up with, from dreams. But then when you're awake from the dream, you're going to have a vision when you wake. So it's going to be twofold. It won't just be the dream, but you'll actually start to have visions after you. Lord, what was that? And he'll start to show you what you're to do after the dream. The dream will be the introduction to the vision. So I, I believe you're already having the dreams, but maybe the visions are the next portion of that. You're going to wake up in the, in the wee hours. I see you like at the 4 o'clock hour and the 3 o'clock hour waking up and God beginning to speak to you in those wee hours of suddenly after a dream waking up. So, Father, right now I declare dreams and visions come awake in her right now in the name of Jesus. Father, baptize her in power and prophetic gifting. Come awake. Oh, sleeping, giftings, everything right now. Increase, Holy Spirit. Fire come right now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we declare your peace, your shalom right now. Fresh fire fall. Fresh fire fall. <sighs> more, Lord. More, 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 more. Increase. <laughs> more. We wait on you, Holy Spirit. Your fire is coming right now. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I just see you going to school, like to get a foundation in the word and and really um, really getting a foundation in, in going to like Bible school to where the Lord can really like launch you into what he wants you to do and use you. fire right now in the name of Jesus. I just release it. I declare dreams and visions come awake in her right now. Every gift of the Holy Spirit come. I just hear the Father say he's pleased with you. That whenever you, you search out the word and you search out the truth, I hear him saying that you've been searching and searching and searching <gasps> to know the truth. And the truth will set you free. And that he's pleased with you and he loves you. And the honor that you show him by seeking the word of God, and by seeking the written word that you dig and dig and dig and dig for, it matters to him. Because so many of us do not even do that. And he hears your heart. He, he knows your heart. And he hears your cries. And he sees your tears. But he wants you to know that he sees you seeking him and running after him wholeheartedly. So I heard God say, my song. You are my song. He says, I hear it whenever you are singing to me. And you don't know if the words match, but he says that you are my song. He 
He says that he sees when you're looking up in the sky looking for him. <laughs> and that he loves you. I see you going into dark places and I keep seeing you like pull the chain pull the chain for the light to come on and I see you every time you go into a room that you just light up the room and he says for you to continue to shine your light because he sees you and you are very bright. So look up daughter and see him in the name of Jesus. Let his presence just consume every sight. Let your eyes behold the glory of heaven and the glory of the Father right now. In Jesus' name, fresh fire come on her like a wind, like a Shekinah glory cloud covering her right now. In Jesus' mighty name, she won't have to look, but she'll see. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit. Saturate and soak her, every being, completely new. Thank you, Lord. A fresh season on her right now in Jesus' name. Made whole. Made fresh. Thank you, Lord. Yadabasiti. <laughs> Holy Spirit. Um, I don't know why, but this is something that God told me. He says, go ahead, daughter, and fall. I'll catch you. I miss our overhead camera because you can't see what's happening in the tank, but... Her dad's baptism got to be one of my favorite baptisms we've done. He was an unbeliever in the supernatural like us. He was trying to convince her to leave this church because we're a cult. And finally, through a dream she interpreted, he finally said, okay, I'll come and try it. I'll come. He came to the front, and he felt the power of the Holy Spirit, so he got in line to get baptized. Remember, he's been trying to convince her to leave, like, under threat. <laughs> and uh, he gets in the water. Finally, he's like, fine. I felt the power of God. I'll get in the, so he gets in the water. And as soon as he hits the water, he just starts barrel rolling, like turning himself upside down and drowning himself, like, like barrel rolling. And we had to keep flipping him over and pulling him up. And he was just, I mean, a mess. And he doesn't believe in any of this. 
So he sat up and he speaks broken English and he says, uh, I try to protect, I try to keep my, my daughter safe, my daughter safe. And uh, he's under, you understand? I was like, yeah, I understand. <laughs> try to keep them safe from us, you know, from this. And he goes, now I understand. I understand. Thank you. And he's crying. He gets down. He goes up to his wife and he's like, mm, and she's like, she gets in line. <laughs> and she got set free from depression. Just then, right then. It was amazing. And so he, I talked about the fact that because they take so long in order to baptize a lot of people, we need more than one tank running. So he's like, okay. So he went and bought us a second tank. So when we have a lot of people signed up, we can fill up two tanks and baptize twice as fast. So that's coming because he was like, so he was trying to get her away from it. And no way will you get in that water to, I'm going to get them their second tank. Right? That's why I said, just like her father, Lord, encounter her. Backs to the axe head. We've had some people not be able to get out of the tank. We've had to carry, I mean, not some, dozens where we had to carry them out of the tank at some point. <laughs> you. <laughs> You've been carried in and out, haven't you? <laughs> yep. <laughs> you, but Lovey was carried in and out. Yeah, yeah, there's video. <laughs> it's in my highlight reels. Ashley's the only baptism I didn't get beat up over, and I thought I was going to get trashed. A apparently, it's reverent to laugh hysterically in the baptism, but it is not to dance. That's, a, that's bad. Dancing's too far. Laughing, no big deal. That one's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Glory, glory. Oh, there she is. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise for what you're doing in the water, Lord. It's about you and your glory. Thank you, Lord. All right, who's next? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, we baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Yeshua, Jesus. Would you come and touch him right now in Jesus' name? Holy Spirit. Whew, no holding on. That's cheating. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Fire come right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. More, more, more. I declare gifts are being birthed right now, Father. It's a season on him that he's been praying for and hoping for. And right now, I declare hope deferred, Lord, right now is arrived, right now. I hear the Lord just say on time arrival over your life right now in this season. I hear the Lord just say there's going to be favor, not just in the supernatural, but in the natural, in the workplace. Lord, I just hear a blessing over your family right now. In Jesus' mighty name, God says there's going to be favor on your life in this season that's going to be marked for others to see. And where your light uh, was small, God says, I'm going to increase the capacity for your light to shine. I'm going to put my spirit like a mirror behind it, and it's going to extend out. Others are going to begin to see it, and you'll walk in favor that you're that you're not accustomed to. And God says people are going to be drawn to you and want to know what's different about you. And God says you're going to be able to speak to them in a different language. There's a different uh, 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 culture that you have about your life that God's going to use to reach people that others can't get to. And God says he's going to mark you right now in the name of Jesus. I hear the Lord just say electricity and fire will mark your life tonight in this baptism. That you'll be marked and changed right now. This will be a moment of transformation and marking in your future. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just release the marking, the fire of God, electric fire right now. Come into him in Jesus' mighty name. And I declare, Lord, that he'll carry shalom for other people. He'll bring peace in the room when he steps in it. Your light brings shalom. And right now, Father, the fire of God come and mark him in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, we activate everything slumbering. We release every supernatural gifting inside of him. 
through him, Holy Spirit, right now, fire awaken. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. More, Lord. More. More. Thank you, Lord. I just declare over you, man of God, that you're a mighty man of valor and a mighty man of honor in Jesus' name. I declare that you will put one foot in front of the other and that you will follow the Holy Spirit in whatever way he has you go, whether it's to the left or the right, and he says, go forward, you'll go forward. Whatever it is that he says, I declare and decree in Jesus' name that your ears are open to hear his voice and that your eyes are open to see the path in which you have to follow. And I just declare that over you in the name of Jesus, that you're the leader of your house, that you're the spiritual leader of your home. And I just say that I honor you, man of God, that you are a mighty man of valor. I just declare that over you. And I speak God's word over you and who he has called you to be in Jesus' name. And I just see that the Lord is declaring you a leader, that you are a leader. And um, what I got is like business affairs and in the marketplace, in the business, like you have giftings that the Lord has given you and he's going to use you in those giftings. So I thank you, Lord, that he is a leader in the business industry and everything that you've called him to that you're going to lead him and direct him just with um, finances and uh, people. And just you're going to be bringing people to him and divine connections. Thank you, Lord, for divine connections to be made, um, that he can launch forth into what you have called him to do. And I just see you expanding, um, that he's just going to expand your tents even, that he's going to expand you and... um, and that you'll be able to reach, uh, you'll be able to reach uh, different people and and groups, and um, I just see him like really taking you into different areas, even, yeah. Oh. Bob, right? Hi, Bob. <coughs> I felt the Lord telling me to um, look up the meaning of your name, and it's actually pretty awesome how the Lord works because it goes with these words that the ladies just told you. But Bob is a broad bean bean. It's an occupational name for a grower, uh, specifically a grower of beans. But um, what I felt the Lord telling me was that you're going to be a grower of your family and to reemphasize everything that they said, a, a leader and everything that you touch is going to grow into a blessing. And you're going to see that in not in just for your kids, but your kids' kids. It's generational. Father, so we just declare every word, not void, but every word alive out of heaven and into earth right now in the name of Jesus, Father. We just release every spiritual gift on Bob right now in the name of Jesus. Come awake and increase and be in the natural. Lord, we thank you for your hand on him, the transformation and empowering you've done tonight. And I bless it in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Impartational authority. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm, increase. Increase. Let the waters of your power increase in this place, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus, the Messiah. Lord, let your fire come right now. In Jesus' mighty name, touch her right now. She's okay, Lord, right now. In Jesus' name, Lord, send your spirit right now. Touch her, Lord, right now. Fire of God, come right now. Increase, Holy Spirit. Increase. Complete a new transformation, a new season for the family right now. In Jesus' name, 
Lord, I just declare, I say, I hear the Lord just say a new heart, a new heart, a new heart. The Lord says a strong heart, a soft heart. God says right now, I'm going to give you a heart for those that God has called you to and a heart for ministry to touch and change. I just see you like a caring heart that's coming over you to love and care. Father, right now, would you just move in our heart, Father? Break away every place that the enemy has come to war against her heart, and I declare right now the presence of God. Lord, thank you for the transformational season that, Lord, that she is marked right now as well, that the electric fire of God is marking her right now. Holy Spirit, come. Your shalom come right now. In Jesus' name, Lord, Lord, let new oil from heaven just come, Father, like a sweet fragrance. I hear the Lord say, like the rose of Sharon, like a sweet fragrance over your life will mark your life. The sweet fragrance of the Lord will follow you wherever you go, and others will see it, sense it, feel it, and be drawn to it. Holy Spirit, make her a magnet for your love for other people. Make her a magnet for your peace, for other people. Holy Spirit, come and bring restoration through her for others, Lord. I hear the Lord say, because of your heart, you'll bring restoration for others. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I hear the Lord just say like a seer gift, something that you see. The Lord says he's opening your seer gift right now. I don't know if it's open or increasing, but right now I see it right now. The Lord says you're going to see things and understand things in supernatural ways. In this season, you'll have a revelation to see into the supernatural. So, Father, I just call that out of her right now in the name of Jesus. Supernatural gift of seeing. Come awake right now in the name of Jesus. Come awake, O sleeping gift, and increase right now in the name of Jesus. The fire of God come and awaken that right now and bring it out right now into the natural. Holy Spirit, would you come? Fresh fire. When you walked up, I, I heard the Lord say that you have a heart of compassion. That the heart of compassion that he has given you, that Jesus had, that you love and you you have an ability to love others in a deep way that a lot of people won't or don't choose to and that are overlooked and i just speak healing into your heart that there's i i just sense that there's some brokenness that has happened and i just speak healing into your heart right now in jesus name and ask jesus to remove the stony heart and give you a new one and I just declare and decree that all of it is brand new. I just thank you, Jesus, for a new heart. I thank you for your daughter. And I thank you that she loves unconditionally. I just sense that you just love unconditionally like Jesus does. So when I walk watched you walk up <clears throat> um I also heard the word compassion and Ruth came to mind and Ruth means um the good friend a compassionate friend and uh something about Ruth here in the Bible is um she was not willing to de to depart from her mother-in-law after her husband had died she stayed even though her mother-in-law gave her all the outs and um ruth was willing to go and live with the people who weren't her own um so while things may feel a little uneasy and unsure Walking with the Lord, he's always going to bring you towards the people he knows he need, you need. And to just follow, say yes, and keep going, and keep that compassion. Yes. So, Lord, every word, come awake right now. Every word, renew does not return void so right now we just release every spiritual gift right now by the laying on of hands <sighs> holy spirit come fresh fire fresh fire fall fill her up lord fill her up yes 
More, Lord, more, 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 more. Now, Lord, I just declare fresh fire to come and increase. Holy Spirit, increase. More, Lord, more, Lord. More, Lord, more, Lord. Everything slumbering. Come awake, Father. New, fresh oil. More oil, Father, right now. Fill her up from head to toe. A complete marking and transformation, Father. I thank you for your fire on her right now. <sighs> Holy Spirit. Complete and utter transformation, Lord. Complete and total transformation. Father, I thank you for the renewing of mind and heart and purpose, Father, in this season. I hear the Lord just say a fervency for purpose in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Thank you, Lord. More, more, more. Woo. More, more. See, sometimes it doesn't hit them, but then they go under. When they get back up, now it hits them. Can't make sense out of it. Holy Spirit, thank you. Whew. We've had lots of people tell us before. It's like, well, I sat there and I waited and I'm like, okay, I'm ready. I'll dunk myself because I didn't get, you know, I didn't, I didn't get pushed under or anything, so I'll dunk myself. They go under, they sit back up, and they're like, oh, no, now I messed up. Now I can't sit upright. Now I'm, I'm overwhelmed by the power of God. So it happens different for a lot of different people for different reasons and because the Lord touches everyone as he wants to. And it's just a beautiful encounter, and that's one of the reasons in our baptisms we don't rush because we don't rush you at the altar. We're not going to rush you in the water. We don't want it to be just run through people. We want it to be a life-changing account. I remember when I got baptized, I asked the pastor, I see the way you're baptizing. I'm not going to drown in half a second. Will you please, when you put me under, hold me under for a few seconds, five, count to five, one thousand, one, one thousand, two, count to five, so I can contemplate how when I come up, I'm new. I said, I, I want to go under and be like everything. I leave it. It's all old, and I come up completely new. I want to have that time to say that to Jesus before you bra drag me up. What did he do? And I was like, oh, I'm up. I'm like, ah. Oh. And I was so upset because I was taught one and done. That's how it works. You can't have two until I read Acts 19. I'm like, oh, well, that's not true. <laughs> At least if they get it wrong, you can do it again. So I'm like, Lord, until I started reading about the mikvahs and understanding the nature of baptism, that the, that the rabbis literally baptized themselves daily when they went back into their home. They never went back in their home without a spiritual cleansing because they were afraid of Gentile filth. So they would literally baptize at least their hands every time. And if you go to Israel, you'll go outside areas where they had flowing water, and you'll see that where, where the priests live, where the rabbis live, because each one of them would have a mikvah outside their house. As long as they had running water uh, in those areas, they found small villages where there's a synagogue in the center and then houses around, and each one had a baptismal in the front where they could baptize themselves before they went in, as long as it was flowing water. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, well, she's still sitting there, so we can do it. Sorry. Okay, I don't know why, but I, I keep asking the Lord, but I, I, I keep seeing this picture that um, you are you are figuring out the, the best way to teach homeschool your children, and you are putting a program I see this like you know like like a cartoon or like like cut pieces you know like like to m I don't know how to explain like <coughs> to make a uh, math or uh, education more understandable so you like cutting pictures and trying to make them understand and and you're pulling together a homeschool program to teach your ch your own children and and like sh I, I keep seeing like you're 
yeah, desiring to also share that to a fellow homeschool woman. And I keep seeing that I'm like, Lord, I don't know if I should share. But I, I, okay, I surrender. I just share. <laughs> so okay. Yeah, that's what I see. I keep seeing that picture. We're a church that, 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 that lets everyone have a shot at prophecy. Not every word has to mean something to everybody. It doesn't matter. It's like, thanks for trying. So if it means something, it means something. I gave a word one time to a woman. I was at a church, and I gave a word to her. And she came two years afterwards. She came to a service that I did. She was a leader. And she says, I don't want to tell you this, but two years ago, you gave me a word. And she goes, and I was like, man, he was so spot on for everyone else. But my word, I did not like it. And I was like, heck no, that doesn't fit. That does, that's not me. I don't receive it. And she's like, that's okay. She goes, I said, why don't you tell me? She goes, I don't want to be rude. So I was just like, thanks, sure. And she goes, but uh-uh, no way. I didn't like it at all. And she goes, you were spot on with everyone else, so you're allowed to miss. And I'm like, yeah, I am. Yeah, I can get a miss. That's fine. So I've never given my, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons here. But she came back two years later, and she goes, so I just wanted you to know, this whole time I've given you grace for your miss. You were right about everything. <laughs> I am walking in everything you said. And I'm like, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. And she goes, I'm doing everything. She goes, everything you said was exactly right. I just did not receive it. I did not have the vision for it at the time. But it all came to pass in the time frame you said it would. Oh, so Holy Spirit. Come on, Dean Keener. Holy Spirit, come. Fire. Fresh fire, come. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of Yeshua. Hamashiach. Ruach HaKodesh. Come right now. Fire of the Holy Spirit, come. Masuego. Right now into this water. In the name of Jesus, I declare the Holy Spirit fire coming. Holy Spirit. Increase, Holy Spirit. A fresh encounter right now. A fresh gift of revelation right now. Slumbering dreams with you, Lord. Visitations of heaven. I hear the Lord just say visitations in your dreams with the Lord in heaven. Right now. Let that gift come awake right now in the name of Jesus. Yadasiti. I see a seer gift coming out of you, but I declare this right now. The enemy will have no access to it in the name of Jesus. No nightmares, no terrors, no scares, nothing that the enemy can use that gift against you. So I block the enemy right now, and I declare heaven can visit you freely. In the name of Jesus, a seer, so anointing, come right now. Thank you, Lord. More, 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 Lord. Anybody else? A uh, couple things come to mind. Um, <clears throat> when I saw you walk up here, I heard the words uh, power and strength. Um, and then I saw this beautiful, bright, strong light surrounding you. Um, and it filled up this entire tank as well. And um, I'll do you a solid and not sing to you, but <laughs> the words or the song, part of the song was uh, glory and praise, power and strength, worthy is the Lamb of God, hallelujah. Um, I see your heart for God, your earnestness, and I believe the Lord's saying that earnestness that you have for him is only going to increase. And I just keep seeing this picture that she's drawing, and I don't understand what that means. And I keep asking the Lord, Lord, what that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean for her? And I, I, I just hear the Lord said, uh, she will, you will, she will draw her dreams and vision. So I don't know if you're whatever you want, you desire that you. 
that you draw it out, and I believe God will lead you to your dream and vision. I confirm that word and that gift of being an artist. And I just thank you, Holy Spirit, that you in increase that gift of creativity and vision and dreams from you. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that as she dreams that she would have recollection of the details so that when she draws or paints, that she would be able to pull it from the memory bank of her spirit, that she would remember it when she awakens and be able to put in very every detail, every color. And I just speak over that, um, that prophetic word, and I call it to come to life in Jesus' name that the dreams and the visions would come to life and that it would be um, stirred up within you and you would cause it to come to life on the canvas, that it would no longer be a time of copying from a picture, but it would be the picture that Holy Spirit gives you. And I just declare and decree that over you and I just say that's a generational to generational to generational gift in Jesus name and then I just wanted to encourage you to really just stay with the Lord through the years that you have in front of you just to really hold on to the Lord and um, go forward and see that he that what he has for you is is so good and he will change your life and he will change all the circumstances that you've been going through and he's going to make everything better um, just really seek him and stay with him and um, and really just uh I, I just think pursue love and humility and he will you're going to see what he's going to do with you and through you. And, um, you know, we're uh, all called to just like have his character. And so that's what I'm feeling is like he w really just wants to impart his character um, to you. And so that way he can he can really use you the way that he wants to use you.
<laughs> when I look at you, I hear two words. It's meekness. Um, and it's a very vague description of meekness. But I see you as a patient, kind, understanding, but also one that gives correction and love. That, that will position you as a leadership. I see a leadership calling on your life. And, um, yeah. Holy Spirit, come. Fresh fire. Fall on Gabrielle. Ishatabaki yatarabaya shetehe namaya tehe. Holy Spirit, burn out all that's not of you. All that's not of you. Set a flame within her that nothing can cause it to be burnt out. It's fresh fire. Every desire, every every desire that she has for you. Father, you know her heart, you know her dreams, you know her visions. You know her thoughts, every thought. And I just thank you, Father, for direction and guidance. So I just release fresh fire right now in Jesus' name over you, Gabrielle Monique. Fresh fire of the Holy Spirit, come now. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. hear the Lord say, although you're meek on the outside, but you also, you're also very strong on the inside. And that, that strength comes from him that the more you, you know him, you will have that strength to face any difficulty or any battles. So, uh, so I will. I declare. I mean, strength. I declare strength, uh, wisdom. Uh, and the strength. Strength in Him and strength in You, Lord. I need strength.
I'm going to read 1 Peter 13 through 17. So brace your minds for action, keep your balance, and set your hope completely on the grace that will, that will be brought to you at the revelation of Yeshua, the Messiah. Like obedient children, do not be shaped by the cravings you had formerly in your ignorance. Instead, just like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in everything you do. For it is written, Kedoshim, you shall be, for I am Kadosh. If you call on him as father, the one who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, then live out the time of sojourning in reverent fear. Hi, Gabby. I, I feel like God is depositing new levels of faith in you. I feel like before you were in kind of maybe in and out of faith, but now he's setting you ablaze. He's putting you on fire, and nothing can set your fire down anymore. I feel that. I hear that song, this girl is on fire. <laughs> I can sing, but I really believe that you will be like a wildfire, and anywhere you go, your fire will be contagious, and nothing can put your fire down. Hi, Mama. So, whenever you just came out of the tank just a minute ago, I felt, I just seen like a beam of light s surrounding you. Like, you were like, I don't really know how to explain it, but it was like you were like shining and everything else in the room just went like, like you couldn't see it and you were just shining and rising up to the Lord. And he was talking to you and telling telling you that you will be someone very special and that you're going to be s like you're going to bring help to a lot of people. That's all I had to say. Love you, mama. Um, and I just got that you're really um, needing encouragement right now in this 
this time. And um, I just wanted, what I was seeing was that, like, you, you have been staying on the path, and you have been going forward. And if you look back, um, you're, you've had a lot of uh, growth over just a short amount of time. There's been a lot of just, you know, change and growth. And um, so I just want you to be encouraged that you are on the path and just to keep going down and stay on the, the path that he has for you because uh, things are changing. So. So, Father, I just seal every word spoken over Gabrielle this day in Jesus' name. And I just thank you, Father God, that her feet would go forward into the path that she would ha you would have for her. And I thank you that her heart is obedient. And I just bless you, Gabby. And I say in the name of Jesus that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and that you are called to set the captive free and that your heart is to open the eyes of the blind and heal the brokenhearted. And I just thank you, Lord Jesus, that you use Gabby to do that. And I thank you that as she walks into this new season, Father God, that it would be a season of new growth, that she's come a long ways, and she has been um, obedient to what you would have her to do in the walk that you would have her to walk. And I just thank you for the new growth and the next level up. I just say next level mindset in the name of Jesus. I speak next level mindset in the name of Jesus. I speak next level mindset in the name of Jesus. That you have the mind of Christ and that no weapon formed against you will prosper in Jesus' name. 